What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I posted a video. Um, I know in the last video I hinted, in, well hinted, I showed you a new car. This uh, 72 Roadrunner, I haven't ever seen, said anything about it since. So, let me go ahead and give you guys a peek at this thing. 72 Plymouth Roadrunner. Um, three, it was originally a 340 car, automatic, shift on the column. That's about all that was fancy about it that I'm aware of. Manual windows, all that good jazz, but, um, this car, I don't, I'm not sure what to say about this car. <laughs> I like the way it looks, the patina and everything. It's got some definite rust. Sad part is this looks great on the outside. It'll bend in half if you try to open it. It's so rusty underneath. The, the frame of the hood's all gone. The fenders got some rust doors got some rust the lower quarters got some rust needs floor pans all that stuff it's got no motor transmission in it um it did come with 400 big block it actually came with two there's no one over there and i got a 727 trans i picked up a couple weeks ago for it over there unfortunately as much as i hate to say it this thing's up for sale it is more work than i care to do for it i like this car i love this body style and everything but it has nothing, and I mean nothing, in it. It's got seats, which are pretty much garbage. Nothing else. These floor pans. Dash is there, but there's no wiring. There's no gauges. There's not even an ignition cylinder in it. Or ignition switch in it or anything. And I'm not a Mopar guy. This is the first time. This is the closest I've ever come to a Mopar. If, unless you count Jeeps as Mopars. Um... I know nothing about these cars, and from what I've done research-wise, no one remakes that hood, so that's an issue. Uh, and every this is this is kind of one of those otter ball cars, from what I understand, in the restoration world. It's not super duper sought after, and so not a whole lot's made. That I, this is again, from what I understand, from my internet searches and everything. Um, the grill for this was a one-year-only grill, I think, and I have found one used one online, and they wanted $3,000, which is more than I paid for the car. So, needless to say, this is up for sale. I just, I'd end up putting more money than it's worth, at least to me, in it, and I still have to get that thing painted and numerous other things going on. So, we're going to kick this down the road and see if somebody else can give her a good home. Um... Unfortunately, I have not done a single thing other than get it home, push it in here, and I did pick up a transmission for it because I was hopeful. But that's the sad truth about this car. She is a good car, good looking car, but it's just not for me. I'm going to stick with my GMs. Um, that being said, the point of me being here today, I have this. 97K 2500. This was actually my truck for a little over a year. I sold it. This belongs to the guy that owns the dump truck. I did the injection pump in. I sold it to him. You know, he's having some issues. Uh, I put a new starter in it three months ago, and the new starter is junk. So, it, well, it cranks up on like the 10th or 11th fiddle with it. Um, so that's under warranty, though. So I'm going to rip that out, get a new one, or get a replacement one warrantied out. Um, the real reason she is here today. Alright, so, I'm um, putting this video together and I just realized that I either turned the camera off or shut off for some reason at the part where I was explaining what I'm doing. So, the reason the truck was here was there's a sensor on top of the injection pump. What's the name of the daggum thing? I think I forgot in the first video too. It is leaking fuel past the seal in it. So, we're going to pop the top of the, in the uh, injection pump off to get to it. So, that's the main thing we're doing. And then, secondly, I had to put um, hinge pins in the driver's door because the door sags. Because Chevy thought it was a good idea to weld door hinges instead of bolt them like a normal person. So, that's what the whole video is about. So, we will get right back to it right now. Optical. That's the word for it. Optical sensor. So, it's right on top of the injection pump. All right. So, that's what we need to pull out. So, first thing I'm going to do, take this top half of the intake off, unplug the sensors, get this little bracket out, take the clamp off, those six bolts, and it pops right off. 
Not a big, big deal. Let's go ahead and add that off. All right, now that that's loose, let's see if I can bring you in for a better. So this, I'm getting in front of the dang down a little bit. So this is the sensor right here. You can see all this junk in the way. There's a, there's a snap ring right here holds this in place and actually pops down below this cover plate. There's an O-ring that seals it here. It's just seeping past it. Sort of a common issue-ish. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pull this line off, this screw return line off, and this line off, and there's, what, six little Torx bit bolts that come off, and this top plate comes off. And we can pop that sensor out from the bottom. So I'm gonna go get some tools and we'll rip that apart. All right, so I got everything disconnected and out of the way. Just unplugged the sensor. I unplugged a couple other things just to give me more room. Um, you notice there's six T25 Torx bit bolts. This actually can stay. This has got to come off. And then this ground strap right here has got to go back on that bolt. It's very important. Because these trucks love grounds. Uh, so yeah, so we just pop this off. There is a snap ring right here i'm gonna go ahead and take this off first just to get it out of the way and then once once i get all these bolts loose you go ahead and just tap this and it'll just slip right underneath so gently whoosh that goes down this comes off it's got a little gasket right there which are I've been told reusable so far I've done this is the second since I've done and I reused the first one and never leaked so I'm gonna go with it so if you can see this little red little ring right here that's what seals this thing up I can just squeeze it out, pull it up, and that's it, that little o-ring. I don't know how long I'm to take this with me tomorrow, get a new one. For the time being, I'm going to just sit this back in here, just to keep, I keep a lid on things, unless this hose fights me. That is halfway. We'll get the new O-ring tomorrow, slide it on the sensor, put it all back together, then we'll get an old test run. After I pull the starter, get a new one, and replace the starter. Then we'll do that. And we'll get to it. All right, so, my new O-ring. Go ahead and slide this on. And kind of slide this back together real quick and easy. We should be in and out.
All right, so I got the new starter in. And everything put back together, she fires up just all right. Things are running pretty good. I let it run for a few minutes to check, it's not leaking anymore. So, the next issue we have is these door pins. Like I said, GM decided it would be a good idea not to bolt those in, but to weld them in. So, there's no way to get these off. So, someone has put pins in this before. You can see the bushing is broken off right there. See it on the bottom of the top hinge. So, what we gotta do, I was able to sneak a bushing into this lower one. I popped it up a little bit and put one in there. This top one's a problem, as you can see, there's a spring right there, and you can't get that pin out without hitting that spring. So, gotta get the spring out, knock the pin down, put some new bushings in it, knock it back in. So, I mean, there's a little tool they make with these door springs. Grab it and rip this bad boy out. Alrighty, so, this is a little tool door spring tool it's got a little forks it just slides in between the springs and you clamp the bolt down and it pinches are closed so apologize for the terrible lighting I'm outside it's dark and there's not a whole ton of room in here so let's see if we can snake this in there and get it all taken care of All right, so as you can see, this bushing is completely gone. There is no bushing up here. Oh, actually, that's probably that bushing. There's a little rim in the right there. So basically, what is this little tail right here? Now, I put a jackson on the door just to keep it from kind of falling out. And this breaks free. Again, I apologize for the horrible lighting. Yeah, see, that's why I put a jack stand down there. Alrighty. Yeah, that's what's left of the bushing. Not much. <laughs> Pin's not bad, but I got a new one, so I'm gonna throw those in with it. That'll do just nice. Let's see about see if we can get that one up there. Let's see if we can't get this pin up in there. Now it is a little kind of a press fit at the bottom of the pin too to help it stay in place we can just get in there let's stick this old one on it's a little lock but they also these came with little c-clips there's actually a groove in here for these c-clips e-clips whatever you call them all right and that's it i'm actually not doing the bottom like i said i was able to on the bottom when there's no spring I was able just to pop it up a little bit. It was just this lower one. And I popped another low one in there. So, now I just gotta get the, uh, oh, I'm dead. Get the uh, spring back in there. It helps a lot better if you hit record, but, got the spring back in there. My bad. Now, let's see how yeah. she shuts. Hey, look at that. Closed all the way. Cool. Heck of a lot better than it was. It almost lines up good. Those hinges are a little worn out, but a lot better with new pins in it. So, that's going to be it for this video. Oh, shoot. Tripping over everything. Like I said, unfortunately, the Roadrunner is up for sale. If anybody's interested, let me know. But, I have other projects. Once I sell this, I have another project I'm going to, well, another car I'm going to look for to get. I'm in the works of, I got to get a new nose for this. The underside is 
this is original nose and the underside is starting to come apart so old uh gotta finish up fixing this hood because this is the hood we're gonna use because this one's all rusted but you know had the bird on it to look cooler once we get that uh, i'm gonna send the car out and get it sandblasted and get it painted that might actually have to wait till spring because it's starting to get chilly here so painting in this garage is not going to go well in the cold so but there's gonna be a video up on this soon fixing a couple little rust spots in the new nose and uh that's gonna be it for that truck we're gonna try to get some more videos out soon i've been kind of lacking i got another one i've already recorded half of so we'll get them out to you soon appreciate y'all watching thanks for hanging in there with me as always give us a like and subscribe and we will see y'all next time